Here's an idea. Rick from Rick and Morty is the ideal scientist. Rick and Morty is an Adult Swim show about drunken, belching scientist grandfather Rick Sanchez and his nervous, squeaky-voiced grandson Morty Smith. Rick is, by all accounts, an amazingly talented scientist, able to do nothing short of bend time and space, travel to alternate dimensions, enter into the dreams of others, give dogs super intelligence, combine the DNA of... Hitler and Lincoln. Okay, we're gonna talk more about that in a second. Morty is what you might expect from a nervous teenager. Worried, reasonably unwilling, and pulled in a million different directions by the various authorities in his life. His parents, Jerry and Beth, his older sister Summer, his grandfather Rick, and of course, his own ideas of what he can or should do, what is good and right. Which, I mean, depending upon your worldview, creating a Bradolf Linkler, virulent love potions, or stealing intergalactic cable might not factor strictly under good and right. There's a lot of tension between Morty and Rick about the antics that they get up to. Those antics are almost exclusively things which can be, and are, accomplished because of Rick's incredible scientific talents. And so we may be led to ask, what does Rick think science is for? Apparently it's for accomplishing whatever personal task, morally sound or not, has recently presented itself to the usually drunk, maniacally self-important, generally shouting scientist. Ollie from Philosophy Tube sees this as an argument against scientism, the kind of vague, no questions asked celebration of science as the only harbinger of progress and understanding. Rick not asking if he should, only if he can, is constantly putting his smarts where his mouth is and constantly bringing absolute anarchy to the Smith's front door. There's only supposed to be six people in this house. However, it might also be arguable the degree to which Rick is even a scientist. He totally eschews the scientific method itself. Instead of making observations, asking questions, formulating hypotheses, making predictions, testing against those predictions, gathering data, and developing theories which then feed back into the process, Rick just goes ahead and injects Morty into the body of a homeless man. Okay, well, I can't cure death. This is bad, Morty. You're trapped in a dead man. Rick is a shoot from the hip, results now, questions later kind of scientist. His scientific process, if he even has one, is as anarchic as its results. We might quite rightfully say that Rick is an inventor or a mad genius and not a scientist in the strictest sense of the word. The show, however, clearly paints him as a scientist, so we'll consider him on his own terms. Terms which might be closer to the way science actually works than we tend to think or want to admit. And terms which also sort of align with philosopher Paul Feyerabend's thoughts on science and the scientific method, wubba lubba dub dub. There is no idea, however ancient or absurd, that is not capable of improving our knowledge, Feyerabend writes. This is the basic starting premise of his book Against Method. Modern science, especially how it's taught and the scientific method, he argues, dismisses too many ideas out of hand. It gives none fair shake to concepts which do not fit neatly within its boundaries. Feyerabend talks about how scientists are expected to specialize, to consider their pursuit's future more than its history and are encouraged to treat intersections with other pursuits like art, ethics, or philosophy as icing on the cake rather than structurally integral cake material. His imagination is restrained, he writes about an imagined scientist, and even his language ceases to be his own. This is again reflected in the nature of scientific facts, which are experienced as being independent of opinion, belief, and cultural background, end quote. Which Feyerabend and most philosophers of science would argue is basically an impossible thing. Science comes packaged with culture as much as any other pursuit does. Rick, by comparison, wears the effects of his culture, morals, and biases on on his sleeve, he is blatant about it. Why are other scientists normally encouraged to hide these things? Well, lots of reasons. Science discourse has a pretty good corner on the we are talking about truth here market. For better or worse, as both a pursuit and an industry, science derives lots of important and necessary power and authority from that discourse. Now, just to be perfectly clear, I am not saying that science is complete hokum. I am only pointing out its popularity when we talk about how we create knowledge. That should be 
very non-controversial. Many people think of science as something humans do, but not something humans sway or control. Humanity is... It's not opposite, but it's kind of parallel to science. Human-centric stuff is something else entirely, namely the humanities. Feyerabend sees this division, amongst other things, as silly and overly restrictive. It denies the inconsistent mess of scientific progress's actuality and, most importantly, is literally anti-humanitarian. He proposes an alternative to the scientific method. Anarchism. Anarchism, he writes, while not the most attractive political philosophy, is certainly excellent medicine for epistemology and for the philosophy of science, end quote. His suggested method is one where anything goes, any and every form of inquiry, including but not limited to the scientific method, attempting to develop knowledge all at once, all methods smashing into one another, some methods and modes of inquiry working counter to one another, but all of it seen as equally constructing knowledge. This is connected, it's argued, to the long history of important scientific breakthroughs made only because very smart people willingly, knowingly, and repeatedly ignored the social and scientific dogmas of their times. It is, I think, pretty arguable that this could describe Rick. Unconcerned with expectations or conventions, he abandons much of the process of a science in his own pursuit of, well, I guess that's a little up for debate. Look around you, Morty. Do you really think this world is real? Though science aims to be a singular, consistent process wherever it is practiced, it really varies wildly in application and aim. A totally dispassionate and objective ideal of science across all of its instances is a great thing to aim for, but in modernity might be a little out of reach. Science, like everything else, can't totally escape the grasp of politics, culture, ideology, or economics, and so it's unlikely, if not a little impossible, that all science is created equal and completely free from influence. So maybe we should just confront this and move on. Maybe that's exactly what Rick does. My new catchphrase is, I don't give a f Rick postures as though he is singularly focused on science, but science. he works at the fringes of it. His science is a personal one, which is augmented by countless other lines of inquiry. His process collides with morality, identity, and responsibility, the limits of perception and family, the effectiveness of art, even video games, and romance. To describe his method as anything goes feels very accurate. Rick doesn't seem to care about the search for truth. His process isn't about progress or knowledge, but about experience. This is what Feyerabend is ultimately getting at when he talks about wanting science and the search for knowledge to be humanitarian. Though it would be very fair to question whether Rick's method is humanitarian. It could really go either way. Rick exudes self-importance and disinterestedness. Rick and Morty as a show charts some bleak and iniquitous territory involving the deaths of innocent people, moral fungibility, and the grim price of whatever happiness is. But it is arguable, as Film Crit Hulk does, that Rick and Morty has a kind of, quote, underlying humanity. That as a piece of entertainment, Rick and Morty might make its audience very uncomfortable, but really that's because it's forcing us to stare certain very human things, things about ourselves and our culture, right in the face. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. It may, in its own admittedly very bizarre way, ask us to be compassionate or humane. So if Rick's methods aren't necessarily humanitarian in his world, Maybe they are in ours? Okay, well, sometimes science is more art than science, Morty. A lot of people don't get that. What do you guys think? Is there room for anarchism in the scientific process? Does anything go in the pursuit of knowledge? And does Rick embody any of those ideas? Let us know in the comments and I will respond to some of them in next week's comment response video. In this week's comment response video, we talk about your thoughts related to pics or it didn't happen. So if you wanna watch that, you can click right here or find a link in the doobly-doo. In case you missed it, I hosted last week's mental floss list show about failed inventions. So if you wanna check that out, we will also put a link to that in the doobly-doo. It was, uh, I had a good time. Maybe you will too. I hope you will.
This week's episode is brought to you by the hard work of these Amish cyborgs, which definitely do exist. We have tons of memories together. We have a Facebook and IRC and a subreddit links in the doobly doo. And the tweet of the week comes from Pendular Water, who made a Spotify playlist of all of the records on the record wall, sourced from the Discogs collection that I started for that very purpose. So we'll put links to all of those things in the doobly doo. Though, yeah, the whole privacy thing with Spotify recently, maybe not great, so yeah. Tread carefully, I guess.